With this modern Alder Lake CPU, Intel is delivering us enthusiasts a massive surprise, the majority of which being positive. Today, my friends, I'm taking a look at the Intel Core i7-12700KF processor with quite the interesting core thread layout, 12 cores and 20 threads. It's also the very first time I'm testing a KF version of such a CPU, even though there's the much more widely known K variant out there. Most of the time the KF variant happens to be a little cheaper though, which is why I've decided to save a little bit of money on that i7, since I pay for all that out of my own pocket. Still, be aware of the fact that KF versions aren't always the cheaper alternative. It does in fact happen fairly frequently that the usual K flagship variant can be had for less. So before making a purchase, take a close look what ends up being cheaper in your case, because other than the integrated graphics unit that comes with the K model, these are essentially fully identical CPUs. So what's the price situation currently looking like? According to the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price, one has to shell out 384 US dollars for such an i7-12700KF. That would be about 390 to 410 dollars in retail. The more common 12700K model on the other hand should go for 409 dollars according to the MSRP and goes for 380 to 420 dollars retail price. Definitely noticeably cheaper than the flagship i9-12900K. However, we are also being offered fewer cores to work with, which is why AMD's counterpart Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core appears to be a great opponent to compare against. While that one does come with a few more threats, that doesn't always have to mean a lot. Intel could very well take home a massive victory from a price to performance perspective, since while the 12700KF goes for $390 to $410, the counterpart by AMD costs significantly more at a price of $540 to $560. At least these are the prices in January and early February. So what does the i7-12700KF do especially well and what are its downsides? Because yes, there are some too. Now before we dive in too deep, I'd like to voluntarily and without any payment, kindly thank the strongest and bravest of Spartan warriors out there. He's going by the name of Yorgios and gets all the wares I need for my reviews through the hardware shop named Equipper. Thank you so much, hashtag not sponsored. First of all, I'd like to point out that these new Intel Alder Lake CPUs can be operated both with DDR4 as well as with newer, more exciting yet pricey DDR5 memory. Obviously not mixed, that is. So one should certainly pay attention to what motherboard one picks up in terms of RAM slots. This is where some mix-ups are bound to happen, so take a close look before making the purchase. For my testing, I decided to go with DDR5 memory, which did not only cost me a lot of time, but money as well. Finally, Intel managed to make use of its so-called 10 nanometer process we enthusiasts have been talking about for years now. So some great leaps are to be expected here, and such are very much visible when glancing over to the core layout. The 12700KF slash 12700K comes equipped with 12 cores and 20 threads. Why no 24 threads, as it's usually the case, you ask? Well, simple, because Intel has introduced so-called performance and efficiency cores, P and E cores for short. These not only come with different clock speeds, but those P cores offer two threads per core via hyper-threading, whereas a single E core only offers us a single thread per core. For my tests, I've gone with the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 simply because there was no ASRock board in stock at the time I made my purchase. As a matter of fact, I was trapped in some sort of power restart cycle with that Gigabyte board, which I discussed in my previous video about the i9-12900K. So I had to free myself from that cycle in order for the system to finally power up properly. For the RAM, I went with the G-Skill Trident Z5 DDR5 6000MHz with 32GB. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't get those 6000 MHz to run stable with my Gigabyte board and its current BIOS version, so I had to content myself with a compromise, which was 5800 MHz. Taking care of cooling duties is the Be Quiet Pure Loop 360mm AIO liquid cooler. It's the only cooler I have that currently comes with the required LJ1700 mounting kit. All is being tested with my usual RTX 3090 graphics card in order to not suffer too big GPU limitations. Very well, it's time to take a look at the different clock speeds. The faster P cores of the 12700KF, according to a hardware info, clock at 4.7 GHz at full load. The remaining 4 E cores then only run at 3.6 GHz each. I find it interesting how strangely stable the clock speed behaves, or rather, how it's being read out. If that's really 100% correct, I cannot tell for sure for the time being. The max turbo slash boost clock goes all the way up to 5.0 GHz, which certainly is quite nice. In-game we pretty much get to experience the same clock speeds as seen under full load, but needless to say, we simply cannot compare that one to one, which also applies to the power draw. Now before we dive into the test results, I'd like to clearly point out that all other platforms were, of course, tested with DDR4 3200MHz memory with just 16GB and no 32GB of DDR5 as I've done with the 12700KF. I did however pay close attention to make sure the capacity didn't influence any of the following test results. meant with the statement of Intel offering us a massive surprise should be very clear by now. The i7-12700KF hardly drops behind the much more expensive, hotter running and power hungrier i9-12900K, at least in terms of gaming. Of course there are some measurable differences here and there, but essentially the performance difference in games barely is worth mentioning. But how is that 
possible since noticeably fewer cores are being offered by the i7. Basically, in the case of the 12700K or 12700KF, you're only sacrificing for efficiency cores compared to the flagship 12900K. Those four E cores do play a role and come with great advantages in aspects such as video editing and especially rendering. For gaming, however, the 12700KF can offer very, very similar results simply because this CPU too, just like the 12900K, leaves you with the same amount of performance cores, eight of them. The difference is in the actual clock speed of these P cores. So with that kept in mind, it makes total sense for gamers to skip the i9 and instead go straight for the cheaper 12700K or 12700KF. A nice bonus is that temperatures are much easier to manage, potentially leading to more money saved on the CPU cooler, not needing to be over the top. Furthermore, even the power consumption appears more attractive, as opposed to the one of the 12900Ks, albeit it's still not optimal compared to the competition AMD. AMD's counterpart Ryzen 9 5900X certainly is noticeably more power efficient, but it's not the biggest difference in the world anymore. So one might be able to get over the 12700KF's slightly higher power draw, especially thanks to the 12700KF for the most part coming out on top of the 5900X, at least as far as games are concerned. A similar picture is painted in the aspect productivity though, but here we are witnessing a much smaller gap between the 5900X and 12700KF. In one instance AMD takes the lead, and in another it's Intel that's on top, so not exactly a clear winner there. All in all, I personally think that Intel is offering the noticeably better price to performance ratio with their 12700KF or the 12700K for that matter. After all, at the time of this video, there's over $100 separating these two processors, Intel and AMD. I guess I know which CPU I'd be grabbing, even as a person that mainly relies on raw performance and rendering power. So all I can say is, hats off to Intel, as bad or rather disappointing those previous two generations were compared to what AMD had in store, with Alder Lake, Intel is not only bringing back some great performance, but finally nicer, more humane and more attractive prices. Let's hope this leads to even AMD lowering prices in the future, so we consumers can get some good, affordable stuff again. The Intel i7-12700KF and also 12700K, depending on which happens to be the cheaper one at the time, are well worth recommending. Thank you so much for watching my friends and until the next video.